Okay, in this second part, we're going to focus on another exercise, which is to make a duet, a dialogue between a simple found object uh, that you explored in the first section, or something like a, a woodblock, and a conventional musical instrument. So if you can imagine a duet for violin and woodblock, or trumpet and woodblock, or electric guitar and coke can, um, so on and so forth. So that is the challenge. When I was um, uh, at high school, one of my early composition teachers was the late Brian Brown, the legendary jazz musician. And I managed to ferret out an exercise that he gave me way back in 1980. That's 26 years ago. And the exercise, the challenge he gave me was to write a piece for trumpet and woodblock. And so uh, at the time I, th I thought this was incredibly difficult um, challenge and I still find it a really interesting and difficult challenge. So this is what I came up with and you can see on this score I've got a number of approaches but there are some connections to what we did in that last um, exercise which was to start to notate different approaches to playing the instrument. So here we've got a notation showing um, to play the woodblock with the round head of the stick and then with the the stick part of the beta. Uh, and you can see I'm trying out a few different ideas. There are lots of different ideas in this piece. There's, the, there's a kind of um, uh, call and response where the woodblock is just making these percussive strikes. It's really being a woodblock. Then you've got a trumpet which is coming in with uh, little phrases, little mel melodic phrases that then become repeated notes like a fanfare. So you've got these two worlds. You've got this percussive, striking, um, sharp world of the woodblock, and then you've got this more melodic, flowing, um, but also an instrument that's able to make very rapid changes of pitch. And so the next question for me in bringing these two things together was how do I make one more like the other? How do I make the woodblock more like the trumpet? And how do I make the trumpet more like the woodblock? And that's what I'm doing here. I've got in the, uh, a kind of repeat bar with the woodblock exploring different tapping sounds. And I've got in this you know, rather messy notation, uh, different scales of dynamics. So sometimes loud, sometimes soft. Uh, and then in the trumpet part, I've got very high staccato notes. So this is a kind of free section, but this is where the trumpet is trying to become more woodblock-like. And then later on, I have a section where the trumpet is playing half valve. That means it's only pressing the valves part of the way um, and improvising. And that gives you a kind of murmuring, uh, speech-like vocal quality. And here, this becomes a little bit closer to the woodblock. It's like the woodblock tries to show with its rhythm um, some elements of speech. They're like words. And so here's an attempt to bring these two worlds together. Um, so this is a really kind of early basic exercise. And as I said, it's an exercise that still really fascinates me because that challenge of trying to bridge a gap from one thing to another has really prompted a lot of ideas for me as a composer. So this is a piece that I wrote when I was 13, Christmas Holidays of 1980. And I want to show you um, a very recent piece from last year. It's called Speak Be Silent. It's a violin concerto. And it also happens to deal with this challenge of writing for a singing instrument, in this case, the solo violin and a woodblock and also a whole group of woodblocks. So right at the beginning of the piece, I have the ensemble, this is the, the brass, the uh, wind and the stringed instruments chanting this little melody. It's ba, 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 something like that. And then later on, instead of using the instruments, various members of the orchestra pick up woodblocks and play that phrase again, but with their woodblock voices. So I'm going to ask Eugene to play that. It's the woodblock with the rasp stick. Okay. 
Okay, so that's, that's a melody, but done on the woodblock. So it's this it's exactly the same thing that we explored in part one, you know, this this idea of the way in which the, the sustained tone of the rasp stick brings out the singing voice of the woodblock. And this becomes such a theme in this this whole piece, so that right at the end of the work, there's there's actually a big dialogue between the solo violin and a solo woodblock. And it's like the the woodblock, you know, has this desire to become the violin. You know, the violin is, is well, it's just really, uh, you know, a box. It's a wooden box with a bow, and so is this. And so you have this, this kind of soulful singing on the violin, and then it's accompanied by, again, this kind of soulful singing of the woodblock with bowed by the rasp stick. <laughs> 